The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 19th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can send me an email. Send that early and send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do so let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific tuesday of course this is tiger financial news network i'm steve rhodes welcome to the show you've got a sea of red out there all the u.s indices trading the downside all the sectors with inside the s p 500 trading the downside dow's off 247 uh s p's off 30 nasdaq 100 139 the russell's down six gold's up a buck silver's off a nickel like to be crude up a buck 26 natural gas up 13 pennies and our 30-year treasury printed out at 118.17 that's off eight ticks leading the charge dollar wise the upside you got toyota motor up about six bucks nearly three percent sezzle inc up 43 percent or 560 and phase energy five bucks nearly five percent o'reilly automotive five bucks a half a percent first solar up two and a half percent that's a four dollar move to the downside it is mercado Libre off 57 bucks, 4%. Digital transformation, 16 bucks, 56%. Service now, $11, 2%. John Deere and company off nearly 3%. That's an $11 move. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. Where do we want to begin? So I'll tell you where we begin. Where do we begin? Let's go begin with uh, take a look at what's going on inside the U.S. dollar index. To do that, we're going to take a look at the euro, the yen, and the pound. We're going to do that by switching panels here. If you give me just a moment. Well, I know what I meant to do, and I didn't get it done. Well, we'll do it anyways. Uh, I, oh, I know where I did that. So here we take a look at the uh, euro, the yen, and the uh, Great British Pound, because those three currencies are going to put in the uh, significant portion of the U.S. dollar index. We could add the loonie, the Canadian dollar, but just for space purposes, let's just take a look at these three currency pairs. So what took place yesterday inside the euro is it formed a buy the D point pattern. It did that because it created that three day, uh, three river morning star candle formation. So support for the euro is going to be the low of that pattern. Low of that pattern is the low from September 14th, 1.0632 to be exact. If price closed below that, then the bottom signal or pattern has failed. Now, what price has also done, it's run right into resistance at that red oscillator and change line out there. If price can close above it, it, by the way, currently is printing out at 1.06888. If price can close above it, that would suggest that price makes its way back into this swing point here for back on September 12th, likely to the swing point high up at 10769. If that unfolds, that will put weakness into the U.S. dollar index. In the case of the yen, the yen needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a road's momentum indicator top. Short of that, price should continue to head higher. As the yen heads higher on this chart, that would weaken the U.S. dollar index. And the Great British Pound, well, if it generates a bullish reversal candle at day's end, it will, there's several A to B equal CD patterns out here, it will confirm a buy the D point pattern. Now, in the case of the Great British Pound, it really needs to take out and close above that oscillator and change line 
currently printed at 1.24387. That's going to change as price moves up and down. But you do have what looks like a potential bottoming signal there in both the pound and the euro. And therefore, you could see weakness inside the U.S. dollar index. Could see. Just depends how this looks. Now, we, the euro represented a significant portion of um, the U.S. dollar index. Here we're going to take a look at the multi time frame setup. We got the five hour, four hour, two hour, one hour, 30 minute, 15, and the 10 minute charts out there. Now, on a 30 minute basis, this was this morning as the U.S. dollar index was moving higher and it looked like it was breaking out. What subscribers I looked at were the number of different, there were two different A to B equal CD patterns on a 30 minute time frame chart. And what we said was be careful because prices attain, at least on the smaller one, the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD, and the next bearish reversal candle would identify a Gartley sell pattern. Well, that is what's happened at this stage here. Now, price is pulled back. The price can overcome, get above, trade above, close above 1.06962. That's a green oscillator change line for the 30-minute time frame. Price should then head back to this morning's highs, possibly take that out, and set up another A to B equals CD with its price projection up at 1.0747. So I'd watch the 30-minute time frame chart for the euro for signals as to what the intent of the U.S. dollar index is. I had mentioned during the market update, what I'll do here is we'll go away from these charts. Let me close these down, free up some space. I'm going to change panels. Give me a moment. We'll do that. And we'll go over to the uh, black background charts. We'll take a look at the new profile that is attempting to form inside the U.S. dollar index. This way you have the levels. Now, I say it's attempting to form because it is attempting to form. We will not have confirmation till day's end. But what you do know right now is where the support level is for the U.S. dollar index on its move lower, should it move lower. Now, the support level is currently at 104.35. So that's the area to watch on the U.S. dollar index on any move lower. Lower. To the upside, a resistance is 105.09. If price closes above that, that tells us we're likely headed higher. Now, in order for the U.S. dollar index to change its trend, and its trend right now is clearly a bullish trend, what we can see here by just simply taking a look at daily profiles is the bottom of those profiles have acted as support when it needed to. Well, that was the most recent profile, the one that was back here August 30th and on uh, August 31st. Here we can see, if I take a look at the profile that formed back on August the 4th, that was a bearish structured profile. Price got above the top of that profile for more than two consecutive sessions. The move lower, where it was supposed to find support, if it was just a counter trend move to the downside, was at the center of that bearish structured profile. That is exactly what happened. So the profiles that we're seeing here inside the U.S. dollar index are providing us with a very, very, did I say very? I mean very important information. In order for the U.S. dollar index to generate a change in trend, what do we need to see? We'll need to see it close below the bottom of a daily profile. Quite frankly, we need to see two consecutive closes below the bottom of its daily profile. So that's what's going on with regard to the U.S. dollar index. Again, keep your eye on that 30-minute chart for the uh, euro because it can have some impact on both gold, silver. Here you can see gold right now testing resistance. That's the top of its daily profile at 1954. And silver testing to get it up nearly to the top of that profile. The top is 2374. The high today, 23. 71. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We come back, we're going to take a look at CDX, XPEV, and Alibaba for Tim and KWEB. Dan wants to take a look at Nordic American Tankers, Aspen, Napa, and AMTX. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Before we go to some of those uh, requests out here, let's uh, let me first go to the 30-minute time frame charts for the equity futures. When we had up that multi-panel screen, you may have noticed, or maybe I said, and uh, shared with you that the spot volatility index is testing its 50-day exponential moving average. So the 50-day right now is resistance. It's resistance until price closes above it. That uh, resistance at 1475. We're printing out at 1472. When we see price get up to a resistance level, in this case here, the spot volatility, what we look to is the equity future contract to see if any of the time frames are generating bottom signals. One is at resistance, are the other ones at support? or are the other ones forming bottom patterns? You can see in the ES Mini, it will complete a TD9 count bottom pattern. Well, it will confirm the pattern at 1130. It will complete it at 12 noon. In the NQ, uh, it does not yet have a confirmed, it uh, does not have a TD9, it's got a TD9 count, but price must spike below the low that uh, took place uh, during that 11 o'clock hour. That low is, and you're only in bar number eight here, so we're off by one, 30 minute bar that low is 15 to 48 50 so price must spike below that between now 11 19 so this will be bar number eight that'll be 11 30 and 12 30 so between now and 12 30 if that happens then the nq would likely form a td9 count bottom the dow equity future contract that's going to complete a td9 count bot what's well, going to confirm a td9 count at 11 30 complete the pattern at 12 noon complete the pattern because the bottom can take place in this case we're talking about bottoms can take place on the bar following bar number nine russell 2000 you can see it's in bar number nine right now it's the low of the pattern so it will confirm a TD9 count in 10 minutes, and it will complete that pattern at 12 noon. So I would say if we're going to see some type of rally, it basically takes place at around 12 noon. Now, does the NQ have to form that TD9 count in order for the market to rally? It doesn't. You've got three of the four that are giving us that signal. It would be nice if all four had uh, were doing that. And then as far as the upside price targets, it would be those oscillator and change lines. They're currently printing that in the ES around 44.88, the Dow 34.830, the Russell 18.50, and the NQ, even though we don't have a TD9 count bottom, 15.342. Now you'll see wave number seven or G out there. In this case here, because that uh, sixth wave took place all the way back up there, I'm kind of hesitant to refer to that one as a seventh wave move, but technically it is out there. So that's what's going on on the daily 
spot volatilx and the 30-minute equity future contracts. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to look at these as we approach that 12 noon hour out there. So now let's get to some of the requests that have come in. Uh, one came in yesterday that we weren't able to get to. It didn't come in until late in the uh, show. And it was from uh, Joe. And he wanted to take a look at Tixable CDX. So give me a moment here. We'll get over to CDX. Let me actually see what this is. Get that fired up on my other charts as well. And uh, CDX right now trading out at uh, 22 bucks. That's weird. Wow. So there's uh, the volume on this today is 114 shares. Okay. So yesterday was 7,000. Uh, I'm sorry. Yesterday was 5,000. The day before, 7,000. Boy, I, I, I guess I just don't suggest you trade ill liquid um, ETFs. Is this an ETF? Yeah, this is an ETF. But let's uh, share with you what it is uh, doing out here. What is it doing right now? It's trading above the top of its daily profile. The top of that profile is $21.99. As long as price remains above $21.99, price should make a run, run for its recent high. That recent high, I'm going to sneeze here, I think. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Its recent high, there could be a double sneeze. Is at 2214 out there. So that's what it's suggesting to you and I. At 2218, you have the top of the weekly profile. So there's another resistance level, 2214 to 2218. And the monthly chart isn't really helping us all that much. So you've got a very illiquid stock out here. Uh, Joe, uh, best of luck to you there. That's what it's doing out here. Uh, but I'd look for some other vehicle other than uh, this. But that's just what Stevie would do. You do what is right for you. Let's go to the next request. This is coming in from Tim. Tim out in San Francisco. And Tim wanted to take a look at XPEV. XPEV trading out right now at about 1770, actually 1743. So I've got a bit of a delay. So if it's trading at 1743, it's likely going to test the bottom of that daily profile, Tim. That's the area of support that you're watching. And that's at the 1737 level. If 1737 holds, I, the white background screen says 1738. My black background screens, which you don't see right now, says 1737. So that is the range of support. If price closes below that, XPEV should make its way. This is a uh, Chinese um, Chinese stock. Yeah, I can't tell. But uh, where price would head to with a close below 1737 is likely its breakout level. And this breakout level in the daily time frame, 1546. I don't see anything on the... Now, the weekly chart looks bullish. The reason it looks bullish is because price remains above the top of its bear structured weekly profile, above a green oscillator and change line. Those are bullish conditions. So watch that 1738, though. If price closes below... Or 1737, if price closes below that, 1546 would be the likely outcome. And the monthly chart, again, no help there. So, Tim, with regard to your first request, XPEV, I hope that that helps you out. And thanks so much for making that request. Say request a few times. His second uh, stock that he wanted me to take a look at, how about that? I didn't say request. Well, I guess I just said it, is Alibaba, B-A-B-A. -A. Alibaba printing out around, because I've got a little bit of a data feed issue here, 86.73, 86.69 is where the last thing printed. Now, this formed bar number eight of a TD9 count yesterday. As long as today price closes below, well, I can feel a cold is coming on. Dang it. I uh, close below 87.64 today will generate a TD9 count bottom pattern. Now, that low could take place tomorrow, but you'll have a confirmed TD9 count bottom. And where price should then head to would be resistance. So the first level of resistance is the bottom of that daily profile, Tim, and that's at 88.22. And if price can overcome that, price will then target its oscillator and change line. That is currently printing at about 88.81. So you've got a TD9 count bottom of the daily time frame. It suggests that you should or could see some type of at least counter trend move with 88 81 that area being a likely uh price target to the upside let's go to the next request from tim and that was for kweb so let's take a look at kweb out here that is trading out at about 27.51 now we take a look at the daily time frame chart here for k web we can see that price below red oscillator and change line and below its daily profiles those are bearish conditions so price is likely headed lower out there. Where's the likely price target? Well, it's trading with inside a swing point that has volume. This is the trading day of September 
whoops, September 8th, I believe it was. Yeah, September 8th. Volume there, 15.9 million shares. We've been trading for about two hours, 3 million shares. So you are moving into that swing point with light volume. What price would need to do is close below 27.28. That would trigger an A to B equals CD to the downside. So I'd watch 27.28. I would also be watching the volume. If you can get volume to pick up and do more than 15.9 million shares as price closes below that swing point, then you'd have a confirmed A to B equals CD. On a weekly time frame, you have a consolidation with inside profiles. The support structured area is at 26.04 to 26.61. And you've got a consolidation on the monthly time frame as well. So Tim, Thanks much for waiting a day on those. I hope that provided with the information you needed. If not, just write back to me and we'll get that off to you. When we come back to this break, we're going to take a look at Nordic American tankers, Aspen, ASPN, Napa, and AMTX. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're going to take a look at uh, Nordic American tanker sticker symbol here is NAT. We can see that price uh, formed a, well, formed a seventh wave move top. It formed a rose momentum indicator top. It formed an A to B equal CD to the downside. Um, it uh, got back to its breakout level at 371. It's now inside a bullish structured profile. When you get above the center of that level, which it did yesterday, which was 391, typically damn price will make its move all the way up to the top of that profile, 
409 becomes a price target for uh, Nordic American tankers. 409 happens to also be the weekly oscillator and change line, so that seems like a pretty good target. Now, if price can overcome 409, and I mean close above it, then we should see a move up to the 417, 432, and then 438 areas. Each of those numbers that I gave to you would be the battlegrounds. The monthly chart out here looks neutral. It has a TD9 count top, price above a green oscillator and change line, price above the top of its monthly profile. So you're neutral on the uh, monthly, you're just consolidating on the weekly. I'd say you're somewhat, uh, you're consolidating on the uh, daily time frame. When I say consolidating, I'm referring to within the uh, profile level. So you know what to be watching for inside of Nordic American Tankers. Dan, I hope that that helps you out. The next request was to take a look at ASPN. So let's get those charts up on our screen out here. And this is Aspen Aero Gels out here. And Aspen Aero Gels having a nice day. Now we can see that what took place yesterday is price pulled back and it, uh, price had been above the top of its daily bearish structured profile for quite some time. In fact, it moved above it on August 29th. It's remained above it. Price yesterday was pulling back. Remember, when you pull back into a bearish structured profile, you've closed up for two consecutive sessions. In this case here, it was more like a couple of weeks out there. Price should find support between, in this case here, it would be between 585 and 603. It's done that. Price right now is trying to set up an A to B equal CD to the upside. In order to do that, you need to see it close above 660. You're trading at 665 right now. My screen here says 657, but it's really 665. The volume today is 443,000 shares out there. The B point has volume of 609,000 shares. So you've got an A to B equal CD to the upside. Let's go ahead and draw that in. That A to B pattern, we'll just draw that in here. We'll give you the approximation. I'm just going to move this over to the C point. This is Aspen that we're taking a look at, ASPN. And that gives you a price target in the 720-ish area out there. As we look at the weekly chart, Aspen formed a Rogemontum indicator bottom three weeks ago. Price should target 747, the bottom of its weekly profile out there. Well, that one to one A to B equals C D gets you up to 721. So let's call it 720 to 747 to maybe even 783 out there. And on a monthly time frame, price is pulled back, found support at a breakout level, which was five dollars and seventy-eight cents. So ASPN, Aspen Aerogels, is looking muy bueno. So Dan, I hope that that helped you out as well. You also had a request to take a look at Napa, N-A-P-A -A out there. There. And uh, what are you drinking? What kind of Napa wine are you drinking? We take a look at Napa. This is the Duckhorn portfolio. Well, apparently it is Duckhorn, which is really a great, uh, they make a great Cabernet. They make a great uh, Merlot as well out there. We take a look at uh, the Duckhorn portfolio. We can see that price form. Well, this, what this did on a daily basis is it generated a TD nine count and Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. And now we've got price above the top of its daily profile. Where the Duckhorn portfolio wants to head to, Dano, is $12.81. That is its TD nine count breakdown level. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here, we've got wave number seven that's in place. Price above that's oscillator and change line at 1189 suggests a move to 1263. Now, because price has been below the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile, Dan, the key level for you to be watching is between 1263 and 1304. With the emphasis on 1304. Price must close about 1304 to tell you and I that this is more than just a counter trend move off that weekly low. And on a monthly time frame, this could generate a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom. Right now it's a hammer candle. I do not know what it's going to look like at the end of the month. So you'll come back to that. But right now on a daily basis, this looks very good. It looks like you're going to be drinking wine up to about the $12.81 mark. So I hope that that helped you out. Your last request was to take a look at AMTX out here. So let's get those charts fired up on our screen. AMTX is Ametis Inc. And Ametis Inc. right now trading at 485. Well, how come we didn't get there on my white background charts? Because I didn't hit the right tab. There we go. Mm, wow, it's cold. It's coming on fast. Um, what we can see here is you've got a TD9 count bottom. So the key level to the downside to be watching, Dan, is going to be that low from August 24th. If price closes below that, that's at 470. That says we likely have trouble. Now, that trouble could take us all the way down towards a buck 69, buck 84. Am I making that call? No, I am not. 
making that call. But watch that low out there because that could actually set up an A to B equal C to the downside, all kinds of things. Do I think that's going to happen? I don't think so because you have that nice sign of strength out here. You don't see it on my chart. You see the wide-ranging bar on September 11th, but there was also some big volume there. The volume on that trading session, that was a breakout level, was 2.7 million shares. Today, you're back on 123,000 shares. But, Dan, price must close above 488. That's its oscillator and change line. It's printed out right now at 486. If price can close above that, the next area or the next battleground would be 511, and above that, 551. Now, what you'd really like to see here is you'd really like to see a spike low this week, really, or next week, this week or next week, below $4.65. Why? On a weekly basis, that would set up a TD nine count bottom. We don't have that. This formed up a nice TD nine count top on the weekly basis. So you'd surely like to see a nice TD nine count bottom on the weekly time frame as well. We don't have that. So I would watch for that as well. Ideally, you get a spike below that. On a daily basis, it closes back above the low of August 24th at 470. So therefore, no damage done there. And then it could be off to the races. That's what I see when I take a look at a a Metis Inc. A M T X is the uh, ticker symbol. So I hope that that helps you out, and thanks so much for the request. The next request, maybe the only one that we have in here, is from G Motion inside the Tiger's Den, and G Motion wanted to take a look at Apple A A P L. Let's get that fired up here. See what its charts look like. Apple right now trading out at uh, 177.80. It is well below a daily profile out here. And right now what it's trying to do is try to take on its oscillator and change line. If it can close above that, that being 177.54, we're trading at 177.79 right now. I know it shows differently on my chart. So I, I, nothing I can do about this data feed issue that I've got going on at the moment. But what I can do is I take a look at what's going on in my other chart where there's no data feed issue. And again, they close above 177.54. You're trading above right now. You're likely to see a further move higher. Now, that move higher may only get us up to the highs of September 11th, those highs being 180.30. On a weekly time frame, we have a Rose Mintum indicator top. You have a consolidation with inside his profile with a key level of support being 170.42. On any move lower, that's where price should find support. If it doesn't, you're likely going to see an A to B on a weekly basis to the downside, A, B equals C, D. On a monthly time frame, price remains above the top of its monthly profile out there, so its conditions are basically neutral, although its momentum has waned out there. And that's what the signal is when you close below, trade below a green oscillator unchanged line. So overall, I'd say for Apple, you want to watch the daily close out there. Again, it closed above 177. Let's call it 55 out there. Double nickels is likely going to suggest that Apple would head to higher ground. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the Next Gen Energy. Ticker symbol here is NXE. This is for Peak G, Insider Tiger's Den. And Peak, if the candle that is currently in place today holds up, that's a bearish engulfing candle, this will generate a sell the D point pattern. Now, what should then take place is price should pull back to test support. And that's at 602. Now, what is not shown on my screen here, and I wonder why, let me try one thing here. Just make sure I've got this turned on. Give me just a moment. I might not have it. I've got it on Barco. So I'm going to change this here, and it will pick up the new profile right now, or it should pick up the new profile. Yeah, it does. So now we've got a better view of this uh, peak. You can see the new profile, or I'll share with you what that new profile is. Resistance at 637. Your support area is between 597 and 607. It's a bullish structured profile. So let's assume you, can, you maintain the bearish engulfing candle or the bearish reversal candle today. If we do that, price should pull back to test support. Only if price were to close below 597 would you have issues with regard to a NXE, or when I say issues, that it would likely head lower. Now, on a weekly basis, you are likely going to confirm bar number eight this week on Friday. 90% of the time, once you get a successful bar number eight, you complete a TD9 count. This says that you could get a top inside of NXE between this week and two weeks from now. So keep an eye on that. The monthly chart looks very good out here. Price is pushing into a prior swing point resistance level from April 2022. Now, there was 54 million shares out there. You've done 59 million shares. Price is pushing into that swing point, which tells us that oftentimes what price will do over time, it's the monthly chart, is at least test that high. And that high is up to the six. 56 level but right now you've got to deal with and contend with what the daily chart is doing and right now you're generating a sell the d point pattern out there so look for at least for a pullback to test support and that was nxe peak i hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for thanks so much for the request nicholas writes in and he's looking for an entry point inside of the amazing one amazon amzn which is trading right now below the bottom of its daily profile so this suggests to you and i that if we get a close below 136.97 Nicholas, uh, we're going to keep searching for where that bottom might be. But on a daily basis, where's that next area? Well, since I don't really have a great area out here, we resort back to the weekly time frame chart. And on a weekly basis, if price closes below that green oscillator and change line, actually, I take that back. On a weekly basis, you already have a confirmed uh, Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. That was last week, that bearish shooting star. Now price is trading below its oscillator and change line. So a close below 136.87 would suggest that price will test 133.45. Old resistance, which is 133.45, I said, I don't know if I said 45, but I'm saying it now. 133.45, old resistance can become new support. If that holds a support, that could be an entry point. 
Where's another entry point if price gets below that? Well, be between 122.23 and 127.04. Well, how are we going to know? Well, we're not going to know. We want to be able to pay attention to the daily time frame chart. Maybe Amazon will go on and produce a TD9 count bottom or some other pattern out there. Or we'll certainly want to take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart and see what's going on inside of Amazon. As we take a look at this current 30-minute time frame chart, we don't see any kind of a bottom. In fact, just the opposite. The 30-minute chart suggests that Amazon, Amazon should make its way back to 133.00. 16. That's its next TD nine count breakout level out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Amazon. Nicholas, I hope that that helps you out for that one. I don't have any other requests that I see. I take that back. KGI or J inside the Tiger's Den would like us to take a look at HP. So let's get that fired up on our screen. HP. HP is trading out right now at about 45.16, 45.09 to be exact. It has a TD9 count top. It's completed. Price is pulling back to test support. That support level is about 44.86. That's its green oscillator and change line. If price closes below that, we're looking at a move to another area of support, and that would be at 44.01. And if price closes below that, then the final area of support would be where price broke out from, and that's down at 40.69. So HP right now, this is Helmrich and Payne, has a TD9 count top, and it's trying to test its first area of support in the 4486 area. On a weekly basis, this, let me see here, I think it still has a TD9 count top. That high, the TD9 count was 4546. This close was 44. 546. How about that? So long as a TD9 count, it would get negated with the close above 4546 out here. Uh, but its overall signal is neutral, consolidation inside the monthly time frame. So HP is for KG, looks like a J out there. Um, I'd expect lower price. You'll have to watch to see what happens at support. On a 30-minute time frame as we take a look at this, I don't believe I see a bottoming pattern out here. No, I don't. Just a bunch of sideways movement. Uh, watch the level here at the bottom of its daily profile is 4507. If you get a close below that or two consecutive closes below that, odds favor that this heads lower. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to that ticker symbol, Helmrich and Payne. Now I believe, I'll just make sure, I've gotten through all of the requests out there, and that's a beautiful thing as we come into this break. So what do we want to do next? I'll tell you what. Uh, there were a number of questions that actually came in yesterday dealing with a couple of different things. One, dealing with the segment that I did with Jacob uh, during Tom's show. I share with folks the uh, great results. Each of you have heard some of these results. You, as you know, many of you know, I went on an intermittent fasting program about uh, six months ago now, taking off all kinds of uh, weight. But that, that's and that's somewhat important. What's really important is I threw out all of my medications, all of them. And it was a ton. It was a long list. It was dealing with diabetes stuff, whether it was metformin, whether it was Ozempic, whether it was Farsiga, whether it was some other stuff junk that they uh, prescribed to me, uh, whether it was a high blood pressure medication, you know, whether it was, uh, um, oh, shoot, what's the, uh, 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 some other medication, thyroid medication out there, have been on nothing, although I did add back some vitamin D just to get my levels up. The last two blood work tests, diabetes is gone. I am no longer pre-diabetic. I was on Ozempic too. That's what really got me to switch over to this because I had a very adverse relationship. So folks, I would just suggest if you're dealing with any kind of health issues, I just tell you my results and they're pretty amazing. The doctors are just kind of like cross-eyed. Um, and of course they're saying, you know what, we ought to suggest this to more of our patients out there. I'm the one that took the massive action. There's plenty of books out there and reading materials, but man, what a beautiful thing that was. There a number of other questions that came in about my trip to Japan and some of those favorite foods and things uh, that I uh, did out there or had out there. One of those, so I'm a big sake drinker. I learned to drink sake back in 1990, and I learned to drink sake in Japan at um, Wakayama City. It's on the uh, water out there. There aren't too many in 1990, too many blonde haired, six foot tall guys that were there. So I kind of stood out like a sore thumb. How I learned to drink sake, I was in, a, I had an interpreter, we were sitting in a uh, sushi bar. There was a guy just a, a couple seats over from us, wanted to buy me some sake. 
And uh, I said to my interpreter, how do we, how do you get me out of this? Maybe you could just ask him to buy a beer versus a sake. His, uh, he, he, my interpreter, you know, had that conversation. The guy said he didn't speak any English. I didn't speak any Japanese. He wanted to know the reason why I didn't want sake. At that stage, all I'd had in my life was warm sake. Stevie doesn't like warm sake. Of course, in the U.S., it was basically cheap, terrible sake to even heat up didn't make it any better out there and i did kind of like a fragrance thing in my nose he stopped the waiter waitress and he had that waiter waitress bring over some cold sake from there i was a believer it is a wonderful drink you just have to know what it is that you're buying out there and uh, so i had some great sake experiences in my trip to japan steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Let's go take a look at those 30-minute uh, equity future charts out here. Let's go see what they're doing, try to get a uh, feel for what the markets are communicating, at least on a short-term time frame for us. So we take a look at that ES mini chart. Let me just update its current uh, status out here. You're going to see a TD9 count pattern that is going to complete in six minutes. This says we should see the ES mini bounce up to 44.84. In the case of the NQ, it still is not taken out that low from bar number seven, that low out there is out at the uh, 15, 248.50 level. So we don't have a confirmation of a TD9 count bottom there. We do on the Dow, we do on the Russell 2000. Again, both of those patterns, well, in the case of the Russell, it's already, well, both of those patterns are completing as we come into this 12 noon session. The Dow equity future contract should make a move to 34.82 and the Russell should make a move to 18.49.50. Now the beauty of these patterns here, at least on the 30 minute time frame, is if price 
closes below the low of these patterns. Those are on those three, the ES, the Dow, and the Russell 2000. That'll tell you this pattern has failed and we have strong momentum move to the downside out there. Where would that strong momentum move take us? That's an excellent question. I would say with regard to the ES Mini, the price target becomes the bottom of its daily and its weekly profiles. That's between the 44.17 and 44.24 level. Also watch that spot volatility spot volatility index today. Its 50-day exponents move and averages 14.75. If price closes above that, then all of a sudden buyers get control of the market out there. So that's another area to watch. Finally, with regard to the NQ, where is potential support here? I'd have to say potential support is down at the 15.191 level. So you know what to look to, to the upside. And when price gets up to those oscillator and change line, those numbers are going to change should we get a rally out there. That's where price could then turn down. And you want to understand what's going on with regard to market breadth out there, TAS market breadth. So you know what to look to, to the upside. You also know what to look at to the downside out there. So I hope that that helps you out. And um, I think I've answered all the uh, questions. So that, And I hope I did because that's the end of the show. We've run out of time here. But folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll be back with you tomorrow on wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday. And thanks again for joining me.